Welcome along to the 361 Studios for another, well, two of them anyway, that's Dan McCafferty. Good evening, Dan. Good evening, Dan. And Pete as well, Pete Agnew. Hello there, Pete. And Dan's the lead singer and Pete is the bass guitarist. Just back from America, boys. Yes, yes. Three weeks ago. How did the yeah. American tour go there? Great. It was the best American tour I've ever done. Yeah. Well, the record, the single and the album were breaking mm -hmm. over there when we went over. Well, when we went over, the single was like 50s, in the 50s. Mm -hmm. And by the time we came back, it was like top 10. What so single was this? Love Heart. Love Heart single. Mm -hmm. The one that Radio Clyde played. Did nobody yeah. else play? Nobody else in the world played. <laughs> well, nobody else in Britain, anyway. That single came out in America about a year At the same time? Yeah. It's taken a while. And it came out and nothing happened. Mm -hmm. And then some guy in Beaumont, Texas, kept playing it, picked it up. number one in Beaumont, and it just spread. Yeah. It's just a funny thing about the American radio stations being so different. Eh? Well, <coughs> the thing is that the markets are very different over there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it's the size of the place, though, you know, certain things. Like, like bands like for instance, ZZ Top, outdraw Elvis Presley in Texas. <laughs> no, they were actually 86,000 people to a gig. Mm -hmm. And like, in New York, they played 600 people supporting Slade, so mm -hmm. it's... Fantastic. Who was on the tour with you? That was Deep Purple. Deep yeah. Purple. Yeah. Um, the album sales have gone colossal as well, aren't yeah. they? Gold. Gold. <laughs> Gold. That's for the um, Hair of the Dog album, album yeah. and the... There's another one coming up, isn't there? Well, one? close enough for Rock and Roll is the new one. That's, that's just the one that's, It's already released here, but it's going to be released there. This week, the name. Mm -hmm. This week, mm -hmm. something. I think what happened there, though, you, you know you were saying how, it, how the record went how it started to take off. Yeah. I think that's what's going to happen in Britain as well because with the commercial radio stations, they've always heard them there. Yeah. You know, and one station on its own chart can affect, you know, the well, other the whole stations. Area. Yeah. The, the, you find very much that the commercial stations are starting to stick together. You yeah. Instead of being in competition with them, I think a lot of them started to sort of go along the same lines as them. Yeah. But then they discovered, well, that people were going off or just the same, you know, so then the, the stations started to widen up a bit. Which is, I mean, it's a little bit of mm -hmm. used to be. Other than, other than um, actual record sales, how different is it touring in the States than in this country, so? Well, it's harder, because, like, obviously because of the size, the, the physical distances, size of the, the place, distances you know? themselves. I mean, it's not that any harder for us, it just means you've got to fly every day, which makes it a bit nervous. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. There'd be a lot more like gigs too, as well. Ah, well, it's, a, <clears throat> it's such a big country, you can't go for, like, two weeks. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know I mean? Well, you could, oh, just well, you could. New York, but it's <laughs> pointless, you know, so you've got to go for a long time. So you, you sort of live in limbo for like a part of your life when you're there, because it's not like being anywhere. Because it's no. not just the states you've made it big in, is it? Canada. Well, Canada. Right? Yeah, yeah. That right. happened first. Yes. Yeah. Tell us a bit about that. It was the the Disquite Tonight single. That's right. right. Because see, Johnny Johnny Mitchell's Canadian. Yes. There's this funny thing about Canadian, Canadian radio station content. Uh huh. And uh, you get the the Disquite thirty. Oh, I think it's almost 40 no, no, percent. 30 percent Canadian material. Uh -huh. So yeah. it doesn't leave you an awful lot. You know, if you think about it, like 30 percent, if you play that a lot, you know, every time you hear a record over there, yeah. so you really bulge. You go, well, that must be the CanCon. <laughs> Not really, because, because the day cover version is like, if someone's number one in the state, some Canadian band will bring it. Mm -hmm. And the stations are more or less forced to play the Canadian version. Yeah, sure. yeah, sure. yeah. yeah. And Johnny Mitchell, of course, being a Canadian. Well, that was a uh, your right. single pop right in there, right. of course you had well, that's album that success there as well. Oh, well, that one did worse for it. Mm -hmm. well, that, the albums, really, mm -hmm. six, six of the albums, of the, five of the albums went gold there in mm -hmm. one year. Fantastic. Just because of that single. Mm -hmm. Which is, so it made the band really big in Canada, but it still didn't spread to the States, as everybody thinks, oh, it's all spread one to the States. Mm -hmm. No, really? no, no, no. Yeah. Canadians are a bit like Scott, you know, the Scots, I mean, they're very sort of, it's like, you know, we are no English, you know. It's like, you know, <laughs> we're, we're American. no American. <laughs> no, that's not Canadian. <laughs> it's like, we're that, not American. No, that's American. Whatever, you know. Was this part of the reason that you recorded the new album in Canada? Yeah. No, well, the reason we, we recorded that was because we, we found a studio uh -huh. called Lay Studio. When we were touring there. Lay Studio. Lay Studio. <laughs> that's French for that. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, we went up and seen the place and it's incredible. Like, there's nothing else to do up there except work. Because it's like in the middle of this mountain. And you look at it, it's totally glass. The sea was round. Mm -hmm. The mountain was glass. Oh, the mountain was glass. You can't tell people things, but I don't believe it. The studio is like round. Uh -huh. And uh, if you look at one side, it's a lake. Wee beavers and that's what it is. Did you do part of the writing there? I oh, did you get the vibes up in the mountain? I'm doing the vibes in the mountains, <laughs> man, you know. <coughs> we, did, we did close enough for rock and roll there. We did the whole album. The whole album. The whole album. Yeah. We did. Uh, before that, we did Holy Roller, that one we had out as a uh -huh. single here. 
We did that there. Yeah. That's the first thing. We just did we just, it as a test thing. Just to check the serial. And uh, we recorded at that time. There's one of the tracks on Close Enough for Rock and Roll that we did there as well at that time. Then we went, we liked the place a lot, so we just booked it for the next time. In fact, we went across specially to record that thing, didn't we? We just we went over for two or three It was only in the middle of the tour, and we just went over to record <coughs> When we're talking about writing, all the songs are written by the band except one. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's all the band who are writing the songs. That's Everybody true. puts in their own, their own pieces. Penny Pennyworth. Penny uh, that's, that's basically what it is. You know, somebody will come in with an idea, and then, then they'll work it out. Uh -huh. How long did it take you to put it together, the whole album? Well, no, it was really quite fast, because we'd done a lot of touring. Like, we did the last album, like, Hair of the Dog, and then we had, like, a year where we were on the road almost all the time. It's not so much the writing of it, it's the fourth album. The, the right, so we, so we had, like, millions of ideas, you know? Uh -huh. to do, we did, like, get sound checks and then dressing rooms and that, you know? That's what we do. Most of the writing, I think, is that a sound check, you know, you get... No, you know the old five o'clock sound check, but uh -huh. I mean, yeah, nobody <coughs> takes that seriously. It's not actually a sound check. It's it's a chance to work something out that you you think might happen. You know, uh, the idea you've got going on. And we usually yeah. play, you know, for about half an hour, and sometimes you get something. We always tape it oh. anyway. You know, the sound checks they always keep us sort of. I take like the or running, or something, you know? Mm -hmm. And we just play it back at night and see what's what we come up with. That's if we've not been playing FBI in Apache that day. You know, something <laughs> that 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 well. Well. The, uh, as maybe we've gone back to recording albums, um, quite a few of the previous albums were recorded in Scotland. Uh, that was a strange setup as well. So well, the, the, the first two because... albums we did, we did in London in, in Trident Studio, uh -huh. which we could not come to grips with at all. Mm -hmm. It was like. It just didn't sound like how we wanted it to sound. I and mean, the strange thing you did was, instead of going down there, you brought the studio oh, to no, Scotland. Scotland. Well, we'd always be making demos in the gang, it was, you know, you know, and, and in Lachine. Uh -huh. And uh, we always got a really good, sort of quite exciting sound on the uh -huh. demos. And when we went to London, it used to come out like, you know, flat, you know. Uh -huh. And it was like, we, we couldn't figure out why, you know. So when we first got Roger, and to do the first Roger Glover, uh -huh. uh -huh. and uh, you were at, you were there when we recorded Loud and Proud, weren't you? Right. You were along most of the night. Yeah, it was Loud and Proud. Loud and Proud. So, you know, we, we said, well, let's, it was Roger said, well, you seem to be really happy up there and you mm -hmm. like the sound you got up there, so why don't we go up there? And you went, oh, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, at that time we were really stony, you know, mm -hmm. we were in debt a lot and that. But we found out it was actually cheaper, so the people that were controlling the money and said, oh, that's a good idea, yeah, go up there. <laughs> <coughs> Bring the mobile up. Aye, uh, so it's, we did that with the, with the Prime mobile, which was a laugh. Mm -hmm. It was really fun, actually, because it was like... So you know, it was a laugh, I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was because you were on your home ground, like, and anybody else, uh -huh. like all the studio guys and that were sort of going, because mm -hmm. we're never shit you have. Mm -hmm. Doing what, what I liked about recording up there is you could go home at night. When we did the... That's uh, how you wound up. Eyes and, and Loud and Proud up there. Every every night when you finished, you went home to your own pit, uh -huh. you know, which was really handy. And we used to start about, well, it was about two in the day, and work till three, four in the morning. But like, 